Hey, all you singles out there. Didn't think I was paying attention to you, did you? Oh, yeah. I've got you on my list. Hi, and welcome back once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, still in the throes of Listomania, making my... Uh, humble contribution to the uh, bedlam of YouTube year-end music lists. I've got two lists for you today. Um, one of them I did not think I was going to do, and I decided, okay, I'll do it. Then I decided not to do it again, and then I decided to change my mind once again, and here it is. My favorite singles of 2018. Now, I wasn't going to do singles, uh, as I mentioned, uh, because I honestly don't pay a lot of attention to singles, except uh, to determine whether or not I want to buy the album that they're attached to. So, uh, yeah, one thing with me is that I, I'm i still enough of a an old-school music buyer. I, you know, I still buy my music physically, as I mentioned in my last video, that I usually won't pay attention to a single unless I know there's an album forthcoming that it's attached to, because uh, there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, for those of us old-school music buyers than to hear a single that we absolutely love and then realize that the album it's on is not going to be out for another, what, year, year and a half? As happened with, I think, a couple of the acts on this list, uh, per perhaps, but anyway. Uh, so yes, and that will actually be the criteria for the items that I put on my singles of the year list is how much, at least one of the criteria, is how much they influenced me to buy the album that they're on. And, and I may be going through these lists a little bit quickly because uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be. That's why I've got two lists in one video because I don't know how much I'm going to have to say about the items on either of these lists, frankly. So this video might not be very long, especially if I only had one list in it. But anyway, this is going to be a 12-item list uh, just because that's the number I came up with. I didn't have quite enough to make it a 15-song list, and there were a couple more than 10 that I wanted to put on here, so... I just arrived at, you know, a dozen. A dozen is a number, right? Uh, so, yeah, and I got two honorable mentions as well. Uh, the first honorable mention is actually an oddity on this list because it's from an album that isn't out yet. Uh, and I know I know what I just said about songs coming from albums that aren't out yet. But, yes, this album is due out in the spring. Uh, it's by a band called Coin, and the song is called Cemetery. And Coin is a band that I uh, discovered this past year. They're kind of uh, indie rock mixed with a little bit of uh, synthwave, uh, kind of like, you know, think about a squeaky, or squeaky cleaner version of The Killers, maybe? So yeah, uh, kind of in that vein. But yeah, I, I really like, uh, I've got both of their albums on CD, and uh, this song, Cemetery, is really, really catchy, and it has basically convinced me to pick up their next album when it comes out. Uh, it's supposed to be March, I believe, is when it comes out, but uh, yeah, check the song out on YouTube, and I mean, you know, any of these songs that you haven't checked out. Uh, go to YouTube. They're on YouTube. The next honorable mention on my list is In My Blood by Shawn Mendes. And the reason that's on the list is because it was the first song that really made me notice um, the maturity that's, that seems to be coming out in, uh, in uh, Shawn's music. And I don't know if that was just my imagination, just because it was one of the first singles off of his new album, or if there really is just, you know, something of more substance there. At least it, it seems that way to me anyway. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the song by now. It's just, it's a fantastic power ballad, and I just, I just really enjoyed it. What can I say? So now on to my actual list of my 12 favorite singles of 2018. Coming in at number 12 is Humility by Gorillaz featuring George Benson. Now, uh, those of you who know me well enough uh, know that I've had a bit of a, uh, I guess, a music geek crush on uh, George Benson for a long time now, you know, years and years and years. So, you know, any any song, any track that features him is definitely going to uh, compel me to listen to it at least. But uh, also, the other thing about this song is, until this point, I had been dismissing Gorillaz as just another hip-hop band, even less so because they're a virtual band, whatever that means. Uh, so yeah, this song really made me turn the corner. Uh, it made me pick up the album. I really enjoyed it, and I'm not huge on the more ambient type stuff, you know, the less lyrically intensive kind of stuff. But when it's done well, as I thought the Now Now was, this album that uh, this song is from, uh, it, it, it's good. It's, it was just a, a good album. Uh, it didn't quite make my list of albums of the year, but uh, yeah. And this song just... Uh, the album didn't let me down after listening to the song. 
So yeah, that was number 12. Number 11 is Paradise by George Ezra. Now I've I've loved George Ezra for a couple of years now, ever since his debut album dropped. He's just got that deep, rich baritone voice. And this song just had a great bouncy uh, rhythm to it. Uh, I, I've i been trying to remember who it is that it reminds me of, but I can't, forgive me. I'm suffering from a mild case of year-end list burnout. But uh, yeah, this, this song just, uh, I listened to the track what, uh, this was like the second or third single from this album, and I'd heard the first one or two singles before it, and I had already basically been convinced to pick up the album, but this song just totally put me over the top, and I just absolutely loved the song. The album was great. I loved it. Uh, so, yeah. Go check out George Ezra if you haven't yet. Uh, number 10 in my list of favorite singles of the year was Half As Good As You by Tom O'Dell featuring Alice Merton. Now, I just reviewed Tom O'Dell's album a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, so uh, you heard me um, praise this song in particular as being one of the most beautiful male-female vocal duets that I've heard all year long. It's just fantastic, uh, just a, a gorgeous, beautiful ballad, and it really is one of the shining stars of his album Jubilee Road. Definitely check out his album if you haven't yet. Coming in at number nine is Leon Bridges' single, Beyond. Just uh, one of the most beautiful ballads I've heard all year. It's just fantastic. I mean, what can I say? I don't know why I like it. And as I've said before, sometimes you just don't know why you love the songs that you love. And that's the beauty of music, in my opinion. But yeah, just absolutely. It's a standout song on his album, Good Thing. Just fantastic. Uh, number eight is a bit of a controversial choice. Um, it is one of the less liked songs on this particular album. Uh, it is a song by Charlie Puth featuring James Taylor. It's called Change. And I have to admit, probably the the selling point for me for it was the presence of James Taylor. I mean, any artist in his, in his 20s who enjoys and respects James Taylor, I'm on board with. I mean, seriously, the lyrics are a little bit, maybe a little too direct. Maybe if they'd been a little bit more indirect, a little bit more poetic, the song might have... Uh, one more one more fans over but yeah it's honestly what can i say it's one of my favorites number seven on my list is say something by justin timberlake featuring chris stapleton and it was absolutely the song that completely sold me i, I was on the fence about picking up his album uh, justin timberlake's album man of the woods until i heard this song and i just absolutely loved it 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 blended in my opinion blended r b and country in an absolutely perfect formula and the only letdown with that album is that that was the only song that was like that on the album. There should have been a lot more songs like that. I think the album would have just gone through the roof if that had been the case. But uh, yeah, just the absolute best song on that album, by far. Number six is the title track off of Troy Sivan's sophomore album, Bloom. And uh, you, those of you who have been watching my videos long enough, you know that I've uh, I've got a bit of a thing for Troy Sivan. I, I, I love the kid. He's... Uh, He's an inspiration, in a way, because if I, you know, if I had somebody to listen to like Troy Sivan when I was a teenager, I think my life would be a whole lot different. I mean, he's just, uh, he's just unabashedly, you know, completely proud of who he is, and it comes forth in his songs. And in my opinion, there are few young artists out there right now who can craft a pop song better than Troy Sivan, honestly. And you know, to top it all off, that's the thing with a lot of his songs is that they have real substance to the lyrics. They sound pretty, you know, th this song was a, is just a great, it has just a great dance, dancey, a great hook to it. But the lyrics are also have, have substance to it and have a message and uh, it's just a message of self-affirmation and uh, I just think it's, a, it's, it's one of the best songs of the year. That, that's kind of why it's on this list, right? But anyway, uh, down to the top five. Uh, number five on my list is don't Lie to Me, which was the first single, and I believe possibly the only single, off of Barbara Streisand's latest album, Walls. Uh, the thing that just absolutely moved me so much about this song was, more than the lyrics, was the music video. Watching the video absolutely brought me to tears. If you have not gone onto YouTube and watched the video, you must. You absolutely have to. Uh, especially, you know, the younger you are, if you're, you know, of the high school or college generation. It's... It'll, it'll move you. It it'll definitely will. And it moved me as well. So, yeah, just an absolutely a beautiful song from an absolutely beautiful album. Number four on my list is Space Cowboy by Casey Musgraves. 
and there's a bit of an odd reason why I like that song. Uh, I mean, I love the lyrics and the melody, and it's just a gorgeous song from a great album. But uh, one of the things that first brought my attention to it was the phrase Space Cowboy. When I was a kid, I was very much into science fiction, you know, anything having to do with space, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it. I loved it, but, you know, so, so that's part of the thing, you know, the, the phrase Space the, the word space in connection with space cowboy, you know, Han Solo was a space cowboy to a degree, you know. It's just that that thing just kind of tugged at the that dormant part of my brain and picked my interest. And uh, yeah, that it paid off. I mean, I just absolutely loved the album that it was from. Uh, several of the songs on the album were just outstanding. So uh, yeah, that is the rather silly reason why I love that song so much. Uh, number three is a single that uh, probably not a lot of people are aware of. It's a song by the Kooks off of their latest album. The song is called Chicken Bone. It's uh, yeah, it's probably the song with the weirdest title in my list of favorite singles, but it is probably the catchiest song out of all the songs on my list. I mean, go listen to it if you haven't yet. Trust me, it, you won't get it out of your head for days. Trust me. It's just a, a great, great fun song. I love it, and the album is, is excellent too, so not a lot to be said about that one. Now my runner-up for my favorite single of the year is No Matter What by Callum Scott, and it is the one that without question has the most personal connection, uh, personal meaning to me. It's it's practically autobiographical in a way. Just I, uh, I did not know about Callum Scott until the deluxe version of his album was about to come out. A friend of mine uh, told me about, clued me into him and sent me a link to a video on YouTube. I had didn't know about this guy, but the uh, standard version of his album, the original version, came out back in spring, back in March, but the uh, deluxe edition or special edition, whatever it's called, came out just in the last month or so. Uh, and this song is an added track on that, this re-release of the album. So, But yeah, it's uh, definitely, I mean, go listen to the lyrics to the song. It's about Callum Scott's coming out experience and, you know, accepting who he is and his parents' acceptance of him, and that just, it just, it moved me like a few other songs this year did, with the possible exception of number one on my list, and that is Youth by Shawn Mendes featuring Khalid. I just, I absolutely love that song. I mean, hey, it's number one on my list, you know, I don't have to say that, but yes, just the, the message behind the lyrics, it's just, I feel so much for the young generations now, uh, particularly the high school and uh, early college age kids now with, you know, all the things that they've had to go through recently with, you know, the school shootings and, you know, everything else, and also the, how it's acceptable now for grown adults to verbally attack youngsters who are the victims of and survivors of school shootings. How did that get to be okay in our culture? Seriously. I mean, honestly. So that's, you know, that is one of the reasons why my heart is completely with the young generations now and the inspirational message behind this song is just absolutely it practically moves me to tears i mean just listening to it or reading the lyrics will should tell you all that you need to know about why this song is my number one single of the year it's just it was just fantastic just completely moving almost moved me to tears so uh, but yeah that is my list of my favorite singles of 2018 i hope you enjoyed that but don't go anywhere I've got another list coming up right now, right here. It is my list of my favorite Backtrack Spotlight albums of 2018. Uh, those of you who have been watching my channel for long enough know that I do a monthly feature called Backtracks, in which I give a rundown of the notable album anniversaries and artist birthdays each month, uh, albums that are celebrating their uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. year anniversary that month. And each month I spotlight one, sometimes two albums one that I purchased on vinyl and one that I have not listened to until uh, the time that I do the Spotlight uh, or Backtracks feature. And uh, I featured a total of 15 albums this past year, I think I might have said. Um, there were three months where I did two albums a month. Uh, hopefully uh, it's a New Year's resolution I have to do a few more double album, uh, two album Spotlight months. Uh, for backtracks, so we'll see how that goes. But I decided I thought I would rank my 10 favorite out of those 15. So, uh, and I don't, I may be going through this list fairly quickly because I 
don't know if I'll be able to think of much that I, much new to say that I hadn't said at the time I did these albums. So uh, let's just dip right into it, shall we? Number 10 is Music from Big Pink by the band. It's just uh, some nice sprawling folk rock stuff that's just, you know, very, very, uh, very easy on the ears, kind of mellow, laid back sort of stuff uh, for like a Saturday afternoon or whatever. Uh, number nine is Aladdin Sane by David Bowie. Uh, this this was my first exposure to David Bowie, as is, you know, most of the albums on this list uh, were my first full album exposure to that band. But yeah, I have to say he was it was an interesting experience, and uh, I'm definitely not, haven't stopped picking up David Bowie solo albums. I haven't picked up any more yet, but I only have so much money, what can I say? Uh, coming in at number eight is Listen by A Flock of Seagulls. Uh, this totally uh, appeals to the 80s new wave kid in me. Uh, I grew up with this sort of stuff. Never this actual album, though. I hadn't listened to this album until this year. But uh, yeah, this just classic um, textbook, new wave, synthy goodness in this album. Uh, just, yeah, definitely pick it up if you like that 80s new wave sound. Can't go wrong with that album. Number seven on the list is Parallel Lines by Blondie. Uh, yeah, and what can I say? I mean, this, this album is, it has the reputation pretty much well earned of being arguably their best album and I mean you know Heart of Glass one way or another I mean the big hits are on here you you can't go wrong with this album definitely uh, definitely pick it up I, I would recommend it uh, yeah and this is probably not going to be my last uh, Blondie studio album purchase either uh, number six is uh, one that kind of surprises me I'm surprised that I ranked this so high in the list but uh, Sam Bennett will prob probably be proud of me um, Emerson Lake and Palmer Brain salad surgery. Uh, yeah, I am, uh, I've, as I mentioned, I'm not much. I, it's hard for me to get into prog or anything that, you know, kind of uh, sprawls out too much and is in too much of a non uh, verse chorus, verse chorus song structure. But yeah, this, this, this was a rewarding listen. It really was. And uh, it's not my, again, as with several of the albums here, it is not going to be my last uh, prog rock thing. It is definitely encouraging me to dip more into the prog. Uh, end of the spectrum. Number five on my list is Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey by Bruce Springsteen. This was my first Backtrack Spotlight album back in January. Uh, and yeah, just so much more than I expected it would be. It was just fantastic. Um, it's Bruce Springsteen is a rock legend for a reason, and this is one of the reasons. Uh, yeah, just I definitely highly recommended album. And again, it won't be my first, well, this actually isn't my first studio album. I've got a couple on CD, but this was my first vinyl studio album by uh, Springsteen. Number four on my list is actually my most recent uh, Spotlight album, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath by Black Sabbath. And uh, again, as with a few of the items on this list, uh, so much more than I expected out of Black Sabbath, I ended up loving the entire second side of this album. And again, there's, there's something about um, Ozzy Osbourne's voice that's just, kind of comfortable you know he's he's just he's so much he's so prominent with his sabbath work and his solo work uh, it's just you know it's it, there's something as i said kind of comfortable about, about hearing his voice in song so yeah definitely a, a don't miss album if you don't own this uh into the top three number three is cheap thrills by big brother and the holding company uh janice joplin at arguably her best uh you know this is there's reason that this is one of the absolute classic rock albums of the 60s. Just fantastic from front to back. Uh, just, yeah. Uh, there, what, can I be, what can be said about this that hasn't already been said? Uh, definitely pick this up if you haven't picked it up yet. Just fantastic. And now we're down to the top two, which are actually both from the same month. Yes, March was a big month for classic albums this past year. Uh, number two is Houses of the Holy by Led Zeppelin. And, you know, what can you say about Led Zeppelin that, and about this album in particular that hasn't already been said? Just a, a fantastic and absolute classic album. You know, those of us who weren't familiar with Led Zeppelin until very recently, uh, when you hear the name Led Zeppelin, you think it's, you know, hard rock. You know, all their songs are hard rock. All, most, pretty much all their singles were hard rock. But this album has so many more different textures on it than... I was expecting it was just an absolutely amazing listen. Uh, that, that's why it's number two on my uh, Backtracks Albums of the Year list. And uh, number one kind of goes without saying. It was pr 
pretty much number one as soon as I heard it for the first time. Please Please Me by the Beatles. No, enough said, right? Honestly, it's, it's just a, yeah. Every song on here is just masterful, as as was characteristic of the Beatles uh, particularly. So, yeah, an absolute, I, I think anybody who wants to consider themselves a serious music fan uh, should get this album, on, on, honestly. It's just absolutely fantastic, flawless, completely flawless. And it's, uh, for good reason, it is my number one Backtracks Spotlight album of the year. So yeah, 2018 was a great year for uh, anniversary albums. And actually, 1973, I noticed, was a particularly good year for classic albums because half of the albums on my best of list here, just now, were from 1973. So go figure, it was apparently a really good year for classic rock. Uh, so yeah, hopefully 2019 will be as good a year for Backtracks uh, anniversary albums. Uh, it's going to be tough enough for it to be as good as 2018. Uh, but although I have taken a little peek at uh, anniversary albums coming up, and there are a couple of major landmark albums celebrating anniversaries in 2019, so uh, we'll see. Hopefully there are a lot more hidden in the shadows that I haven't seen yet, so yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching these two lists. I hope you really, really enjoyed them. Uh, I enjoyed putting them together. Uh, my voice is starting to go a little bit here, so uh, hopefully my favorite albums of the year list uh, will be coming out tomorrow, I hope. Cannot guarantee it, but I'm really, uh, really going to try to put it out tomorrow, uh, New Year's Day. Can you believe it? 2019's here. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, comments on anything, any of the items on these lists. Um, what were your favorite singles of the year? Um, any favorite anniversary albums, ones that you particularly remember from my backtrack, Backtracks features that uh, you really, really enjoyed? Let me know. And uh, any other comments, uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I would love to have you as a subscriber to ring in the new year. And again, thank you so, so very much for watching. Um, see you next time very soon. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.